we're going to uh, um, return with you now to those thrilling days of yesteryear when we used to have the Christic Institute update with Bill Davis as we explored the, uh, among other things, but mostly the CIA, Ollie North, cocaine operation back in 1986, 87, 88, weekly. And, um, and it seems to have been finally made the news. It just takes a while. Uh, hi, Bill Davis. Hi, Roy. As usual, you were 10 years ahead. 10 years. Well, that's too long. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be back uh, with you. But uh, this story is very interesting, the way it's breaking. And, of course, it's especially interesting to us. As your readers will remember, we brought a lawsuit some six months before Iran-Contra ever broke and said that the Contras were involved in drug dealing and that arms for drugs were part of the scheme to resupply them, that uh, the CIA was uh, either participating in or looking the other way when it was happening. And uh, the CIA, among others, they weren't the only government officials. Actually, we tracked it right into the National Security Council and the unchecked power of the executive branch. Uh, But... We got squashed, of course. Uh, Friv- frivolous lawsuit. Yes, we were thrown out and fined over a million dollars for bringing a, quote, frivolous lawsuit. Unprecedented And the nice, fine. the nice thing about this new story, breaking as it has because of the fine work of Gary Webb at uh, the San Jose Mercury News, uh, the interesting thing is he didn't consult us. He didn't use our sources. Uh, there's, there's not a bit of echo in this thing. He did his own personal investigation and came to the exact same conclusion that we did. So uh, we're rather delighted that he did that uh, and that he did it without, uh, you know, consulting our our sources or our people. And we're especially delighted that the story now suddenly has legs. Why? Well, I, I think there are three reasons. Number one, the climate is different. You know, there are more people now who know that the government lies. I mean, we've had the recent incidents of things like uh, sarin gas and, and other gases in Iraq. Pentagon swore up and down that no, absolutely no, U.S. soldiers were subjected to any kind of uh, germ or gas warfare. Well, uh, you know, they've been reviving it upwards steadily. I think they're up to 15,000 or so and counting now. So, you know, there's that, there's there's the... They could multiply times uh, 10 or y- 20, yes, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, but, but the important thing is that it shows once again that major government institutions do know things that they simply either lie or, or, or hide and, and cover up and that the press is subservient and doesn't dig it out. Uh, there was also the incident of the uh, Korean POWs left behind, clear back in the Eisenhower administration, that officials did know about it, um, did lie about it. Uh, so, the, uh, number one, the climate has changed, but, but there, are two other, there are two other reasons why I think the story has legs now. Number one is that Gary Webb added to the work that we and many others had done by pinning the the drug importation to a specific community, i.e. South Central Los Angeles. And uh, in doing so, he has stirred up a hornet's nest. South Central has people, of course, like Maxine Waters, uh, who uh, majors in outrage, uh, but rightly so, justly so. And she's, of course, taking this uh, ball and running with it. I'm delighted that she's doing that. So that's that's kind of a new of why this thing got legs. But, you know, the third reason, I think the most important one of all, is that Gary Webb and the San Jose Mercury immediately put this story up on the Internet, along with their documentation. Uh, The Kerry Report and a whole variety of other documents are, are there for all to see on the Internet. So... What, what's happening now is that literally thousands of people per day, they're, they're, they've been having almost 100,000 hits per day on their story, which is up on the Internet. So, so 100,000 people tuning in to their story that, and the documents. Right. That's right. At least, uh, at least making contact with it over the Internet. Uh, you know, how much of it they read, of course, is hard to tell. But, but the fact is people are no longer dependent upon the so-called papers of record, uh, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the L.A. Times, to tell them what to think. And I, 
I'm, you know, I, th- I think that's absolutely fantastic. For the first time, we have a more democratic kind of, of way of getting news out. It's not just the lonely voices of nighttime talk radio <laughs> anymore that are uh, involved in trying to get the truth out there. There's a whole new technology that uh, that can be used for stuff like this. And once the genie's out of the bottle, of course, it's very hard to put it back in, even though the papers of record are trying very hard to put the genie back in the bottle. And they're, they, you know, they've all come out with these kind of uh, debunking stories and, and basically rebuttals of the story. And, and you know, But they're, they look a little silly when they do that, I think, because their their rebuttals are are very weak, and uh, you know, because the story itself is strong, it is well documented. It's not the first time it's been out there. There there are dozens of other authors and uh, you know government agents that have come forward. Christic Institute was on it. Uh, there were people like uh, Peter Dale Scott who wrote his book Cocaine Politics, uh, marvelously well documented. Uh, there are people like, uh, most recently we've had Celerino Castillo, a DEA agent who wrote the book Powder Burns, and uh, Celi Castillo is, has been speaking out about the fact that he personally saw this going on in Central America and reported it, and basically was told, uh, you know, this is protected by the White House, don't mess with it. Now the um, the tenor of the Times, both New York and and uh, L.A., is that this is an interesting story and everything. But it's not really. I mean, it's sort of a theory and uh, a yes. conspiracy theory, and there's really no proof that any of this goes on. And if there is, and it's only like you know a little bit, and uh, it hardly really makes any difference <laughs> if somebody who knew somebody who. Right. Who, who was married to somebody's cousin who belonged to the CIA did bring a bag of cocaine in from somewhere, but it's really not big or important, and it's certainly not documented. It's still a theory. That's and right. They, it should they, be maybe investigated sometime. <laughs> we should possibly start an investigation sometime. Well, well, some of them are saying, "Oh no, it's already been investigated. Serious investigation." The L.A. Times said that it's been seriously investigated uh, before, which is just a bald-faced lie. I mean. Iran Contra did not investigate the drug traffic. The people who held up the sign saying, "Ask them about drugs, ask about cocaine," they got more time in jail than the Iran Contra conspirators got. Um, and yes, I, I I find these efforts rather. Uh, that's right. That was during the Iran Contra hearings when they avoided any talk of drugs or anything right. unpleasant. And um, in one during the hearings, a couple of people held up a great big sign saying, "Ask about the cocaine." Yes, right? yeah. And that, well, Ollie North was on the stand. They did that. They got arrested and thrown in jail. The sign holders got arrested and were given two years. Was it Some, something like that? They didn't serve that long, but I, I've forgotten. But they, they got more time out of it than most of the uh, people who shredded the Constitution got. And, and, you know, as, as for other investigations, when, when, when the L.A. Times says that this has been seriously investigated in the past, I don't know what they're talking about. The, the only thing that came close to investigation in this matter was Senator John Kerry, who, as head of a subcommittee it's on... John Kerry of Nebra- uh, Nebraska? No, this is John Kerry of Massachusetts. Massachusetts, that, yeah, not the other Kerry. Bob Kerry of Nebraska, but... Uh, John Kerry did look into it, but he did not, he specifically stated publicly that he did not look at the, uh, you know, the connection to the intelligence agencies. In fact, when he was asked about that in a, in a subsequent legal proceeding, he said, no, no, he interrupted and he said, no, no, he said, I have an agreement with Senator Boren that I would not do that. In other words, that I would not look into the connection to the intelligence agency. He, he specifically steered away from that. So, so for people to say, well, there have been you know, extensive investigations and serious investigation of this is nonsense. The only investigations were done by private individuals like the Christic Institute or some of the writers that I've mentioned. Uh, I, I forgot to mention, by the way, uh, Robert Perry and uh, 
uh, what's his name, Brian Barger, the two of them working for the Associated Press were among the earliest making the Contra cocaine connection, and they basically got run out of the Associated Press for their efforts. Uh, Robert Perry has continued his work and his investigating of the topic and now produces a periodical called Consortium, which is very good. Um, but... Uh, the only the, the investigations that were done were done by private individuals, and from the get-go, the papers of record poo-pooed it, uh, ignored it, tried to pretend like there was no evidence. Um, I, you know, you mentioned that they they say, oh well, it's just some conspiracy people. I found it especially demeaning that the L.A. Times, in its recent three-part series, they had three long articles on three subsequent days. And, and the whole of part three, which is supposed to be, quote, the cocaine trail, that's that's what they put in the headline. But the whole article is about how these poor blacks and others in the ghetto seem to be uh, the victims of conspiracy theories and, and uh, you know, they have notions about all embracing conspiracy and uh, they, they poo-poo the whole thing, do, do what... They've always done, even around things like the Kennedy assassination, they say, well, anybody who doesn't believe the official version is, is some kind of a conspiracy nut. Uh, it, it really is a very demeaning article, though, and I think only a kind of a veiled racist article uh, to imply that the blacks are simply people who are taken in by some kind of wild conspiracy theories, uh, when in fact there's solid evidence that their community was devastated by crack, which in part, at least, was allowed in by U.S. officials as part of the funding of this uh, insane Contra war that, that the CIA raged. Uh, the CIA basically set up the Contras. They certainly resupplied them. They certainly directed the Ilopango Air Base where they were supplied out of, uh, etc. So, you know, to say that there's no connection to the CIA... It is also, it seems to me, quite silly. Uh, Gary Webb uh, pointed out that it leads right to the CIA doorstep. He didn't say that there was direct involvement by the CIA, and of course the LA Times jumps on that too. They they seize on the fact that uh, there's no direct uh, link to the CIA in part two here. Let me get the exact quote. They you can usually tell which direction an article is going by by looking at the headlines and the subheads. They have a big uh, subhead here in the middle of the page saying that the chief investigator for a Senate subcommittee that investigated charges of CIA-sanctioned drug trafficking said there's no evidence that the agency participated in cocaine trade. Well, I happen to know that investigator, uh, you know, and and... His name is Jack Blum, and what he said is, I quote, um, Did the CIA have agents in Latin America selling drugs to fund the Contras? Categorically, absolutely not, Blum said. But that's the wrong question. And they don't go on to point out that, uh, that what Blum really says we ought to ask is the following, quote, If you ask, in the process of fighting a war against the Sandinistas, did people connected with the U.S. government open channels which allowed drug traffickers to move drugs to the United States? Did they know the drug traffickers were doing it? And did they protect them from law enforcement? The answer to all those questions is yes. Close the quote. And, and yet in, in their headline, they talk about chief investigator finds that there's, there's no evidence of uh, CIA-sanctioned drug trafficking. I mean, it, it's, it's clearly a kind of rebuttal. The, these articles are not news articles. They are rebuttals of what the San Jose Mercury and others have been saying. And, and it won't wash. People just aren't going to buy it anymore. But this is the L.A. Times and the New York Times. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. the Washington Post. And the Washington I, Post. I, I was in Washington last week. They had articles by none other than Walter Pincus. Uh, you know, same kind of debunking article. Walter Pink Pincus has admitted that at least three times he has made trips abroad on CIA subsidies. You know, so here's a CIA asset, uh, you know, basically writing in, a, in the paper of record uh, that these stories are frivolous and that there's nothing to it. it I, I mean, it, it's, 
one almost has to feel sorry for these papers of record for their their backwardness and their 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 apparent belief that they can still continue to dictate public opinion by just publishing these sophomoric articles that uh, that really are not a refutation or, or and certainly are not news they're they're basically trying to debunk those who are getting at the real news. Now, what are facts? What is evidence? Well, all right, there's a lot of evidence, as I've said. Uh, um, as a matter of fact, just let me take paint the broader picture here for a moment. People say, well, is there a connection to the CIA? The fact is there's been a connection between the CIA and the drug trade from the beginning of the CIA. In fact, even earlier than the beginning of the the precursor of the, the OSS, CIA. Yeah. yeah, the OSS, uh, you know, used Meyer Lansky and Lucky Luciano uh, for some of their efforts. And, of course, we know that both Lansky and Luciano were involved heavily in drug traffic. Um, of course, people like Alfred McCoy have documented a lot of the early days of the CIA's involvement in Southeast Asia and the heroin traffic. His book... Uh, the politics, politics of heroin, heroin is is still one of the best around, very carefully documented. This is not some kind of conspiracy nut. This is somebody who documented everything that he said and footnoted it. Um, I do think, I, I understand the government is going to investigate some of the charges oh, that yes. he presented about is it 20 years ago, Well, they, uh, 30 years ago. Not only that, but, but guess what? There's been a secret investigation by the CIA, which they are now telling us all about. Uh, but in case people don't believe it, they're going to do it again. Uh, the, uh, where was it here? Yeah. Gates, uh, who used to be the CIA director, was worried enough about press reports of contra drug trafficking in 1986 that he ordered a secret full-scale internal investigation of the issue according to the article here by the LA Times well la di da you know forgive me if I don't really find it compelling that the CIA investigates itself and doesn't find any evidence of wrongdoing I mean where have we seen this before uh, and and now believe it or not they're going to redo the investigation, uh, even though the first one, quote, didn't come up with anything to speak of, uh, according to Gates. And you can bet that the next one won't come up with anything to speak of either. And you can bet that most of the congressional efforts won't come up with anything to speak of, just as they didn't really in the Iran-Contra. Um, although there might be some interesting efforts in Congress, particularly if the Democrats recapture the House, because some of the black caucus members who are very upset around this issue would then be uh, chairs of, of committees. People like Conyers and Wrangell and uh, Dellums. Uh, the black caucus may have some influence, although it's questionable how much horsepower they'll have with the, the debunkers and the uh, uh, you know, damage control people that are in Congress. But at least that will be uh, that will be an interesting avenue in the future. Now, you, uh, but just proceeding with you know wh what is the evidence? Uh, in addition to McCoy's book, which actually, of course, precedes the the uh, Contra phase, uh, the best thing I think that documents it, uh, besides the Christic Institute's book, uh, Inside the Shadow Government, uh, as I mentioned, is some of the work done by Peter Dale Scott and uh, and other authors. The, I mean, the evidence is abundant that uh, that there were connections here. the The fact is, it was the it was the CIA's army, the Contras, which uh, which was waging this war. It was the Contras that were involved in a lot of drug trafficking. Now, when when and, and again, is there evidence of that? Yes. When the L.A. Times quotes Alan Fires, the former CIA agent who pled guilty and agreed to cooperate, um, the L.A. Times quotes Alan Fires uh, as uh, saying that, uh, they, they don't quote him directly, but they, they quote another official who who's, talks about Fires and, and said that he ran the Contra War and he was very concerned about keeping these organizations on the straight and narrow but we could not uh, look at domestic political activities of 
U.S. individuals. So poor CIA, since they couldn't operate in the U.S., which of course they regularly do, um, they allegedly couldn't get at this. Well, for them to mention fires without mentioning the fact that fires said under oath to the Iran-Contra hearings when asked, was it just one or two Contra people? He said, oh no, oh no, it was a lot. It was there were a lot of Contra uh, leaders and others involved in drug trafficking. Uh, so there's, there's that kind of evidence coming right from the CIA people that this wasn't just a random thing, uh, you know, Freeway Ricky Ross, uh, a drug dealer doing it. Uh, what other evidence is there? Well, we have sworn depositions from pilots who flew the stuff in. Uh, you know, one of our defendants, of course, was John Hull, whose ranch in northern Costa Rica was used both to unload arms for the Contras and to load up drugs. And uh, <clears throat> people like Gary Betzner was... That was John Hull CIA. John Hull received money from the CIA, and he specifically received $10,000 a month from uh, the National Security Council, from Oliver North. Uh, see, uh, you know, it, it's hard to tell who's CIA and who isn't. He, well, he got uh, money, but he may not have had a membership card that's in right. his wallet. He probably wasn't an employee, but he was what's known in the trade as an asset. Uh, but getting back to the pilots, you know, people like Betzner landed at his ranch, uh, would load up 500 kilos of, uh, of cocaine and, and bring it back. We've had sworn testimony from people like Michael Tolliver, who uh, yeah, he, he talked about bringing one load in where in the air he was redirected. Instead of landing at a clandestine air base in the U.S., he was, he was redirected to land on Homestead Air Force Base in southern Florida. And he got real. He got really worried. He said it kind of freaked him out because he thought he was going to get arrested. But he landed on the base. A little pickup truck came out in front of him with a sign on the back of it saying "Follow me." Led him over to a remote part of the airport. He gets out of the airplane, uh, gets paid his seventy thousand dollars in cash for the flight, and took a taxi and went home. Now you tell me that you know, as I say, it's not just CIA, but certainly government officials don't know this is happening when it's landing on a U.S. Air Force base. I mean, it, it's, it's absurd to say that, uh, that, that there's no evidence that, that something here was amiss. Now, the Oliver North Diaries were something that you, um, the Christic Institute, had mentioned, but it, they never came to light, and now a few pages have even been shown on television. That's right. Bits and pieces. One, one of the ones that we had is, is now quoted because Ollie wrote... Uh, when he was talking about the uh, armed supermarket in Honduras, uh, whose director, by the way, was one of our defendants, uh, Del Amico. But when Ali wrote about that, he wrote, quote, 14 million to finance came from drugs. You know, so that's written in Ali North's own personal handwriting. Now, the problem is, what else does Ali know and what else is in his thousands of pages of notes? We've been told by people in Congress who subpoenaed them but then kept them secret, that 541 pages of all these personal handwritten notes have drug references in them. 541 pages. That's right. So when people say, well, there's no documentation of this, well, nonsense, you know, let's look at, let's get the real documents and, and get them out where we can have an independent look at them. Let's get Ollie North's notebook and put it up on the internet and let people judge for themselves whether or not there is a connection here to U.S. officials. We think there is, and we think it can easily be documented if, uh, you know, if there really was any institutional interest in, in doing this. So, I mean, I, you know, I could go on and on about different bits of, of evidence that... Uh, yeah, give us some more. There, there, there's, there's always the, this no evidence, no <clears throat> evidence, no evidence. Yeah. Well, here's evidence. Well, there, uh, there, pile it on. There's the, there's the kind of evidence, uh, circumstantial evidence, for instance, of, of the event up in the Bay Area, the so-called Frogman incident, where a couple of drug dealers were arrested. Uh, they, did have, they did have drugs. They confiscated s some money from them, some cash. Uh, two of the Contra leaders then wrote letters to the Justice Department saying, oh no, that money was meant to purchase arms for the Contras, and the uh, U.S. attorney there turned around and gave the money back. 
You know, I mean, how often do you see that happen in, in say, South Central, where, where drug dealers have cash confiscated and then they turn around and give it back to them? Closer to home, there there's the, the question right here of, uh, oh, I the guy's name is uh, slipping my mind momentarily here. Uh, just a second. The, the, uh, the guy who was arrested, uh, yeah, um, Ronald Lister. When Ronald Lister was arrested, he, he said, listen, you're not supposed to be here, you know, I work for the CIA and so on and so forth. Well, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But the fact is, that the stuff that was confiscated from him, including uh, one drug paraphernalia kit, uh, was later returned to him, and nobody was prosecuted. When when uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters walked into Sheriff Block's office and demanded these documents, she was able to get them, and, and one of the documents shows what was given back. And, and one of the things that they gave back was, quote, one cocaine prep kit close the quote you know now why did that happen is it just i mean it boggles the imagination to think that that happened just kind of randomly and that there wasn't some connection to quote national security the cia whatever you want to call it uh, some people are being covered the frogman incident shows it the ronald lister incident shows it there are are you know, dozens of other incidents that show it. Oh, yeah, ju just jumping back for a moment, when, you know, w when they say, as the L.A. Times did, that this has been seriously investigated before, uh, the uh, the investigations, as I say, constantly steered away from the drug stuff, and nobody, you know, not the Justice Department, not the Iran-Contra, not even Senator Kerry, has seriously looked into the connection between the Contras and drugs. So when people say, well, there's no documentation, <laughs> how can there be any documentation when no one has looked for any documentation, looked in, in any kind of serious way? Now, there was a Lawrence Walsh investigation. Yes, Lawrence Walsh, the special prosecutor, um, but he too, you know, admitted that he had so many things on his plate that he didn't he didn't begin to look at the at the drug issue. He He was looking mainly according to the mandate that he was given by the, uh, actually the mandate was drawn up by Ed Meese, who was then Attorney General, it was to look into whether or not the president knew about and allowed the diversion of money from the sale of arms to Iran to help the Contra effort. And and that's that's what he looked into. The whole drug thing was outside the purview. It was a diversion to look at the diversion. That's right, and and it was set up that way because Meese knew that he wouldn't find any smoking gun about Reagan. You know, Reagan didn't sign off any documents, and and uh, you know, so uh, this thing was carefully orchestrated to steer away from the real wrongdoing, which was there. Fortunately, now because of this San Jose Mercury article, and and especially because of the outrage in the black community. This thing is taking off, and I'm delighted that it is because uh, it's it's well overdue. <laughs> and you're listening to Something's Happening on KPFK Los Angeles. We are on live as of uh, 31st of October 1996 with Bill Davis. Of the, is it is it correct to say the Christic Institute? Uh, the um, yes, the we, we still exist. You were not squashed out of existence. Well, uh, yes and no. We we were squashed, but not out of existence. We still uh, we're we're not dead. We are dormant, and we're right next door to dead. But maybe, but less and less so, evidently. Well, the, there are some interesting efforts being stirred up now around this. Uh, you know, the fact that the story has finally got legs. We don't have any. Our lawsuit will never come back because we went all the way to the Supreme Court and were turned down. Uh, so there's no more legal remedy around that particular lawsuit. But there are some other efforts that are, are beginning to crank up that would be premature to talk about. L let me go back to for just a second, though, to this whole question of the, the way these uh, stories minimize. You brought up in your introduction that, uh, you know, they're trying to say, oh, well, uh, you know, it wasn't a lot of cocaine that they were involved in, and they... They didn't, uh, you know, Freeway Ricky Ross wasn't, uh, as the 
LA Times puts it, he wasn't the first one uh, to, or, or the biggest to bring it in. Uh, so and with Senator Specter investigating it, I'm expecting a um, single shipment <laughs> theory to come out. A single, a single bullet, all right. Uh, they even had the gall to say, oh, well, it was only five tons that he dealt, <laughs> dealt with. You know, my, my, my first question is, whatever happened to zero tolerance, you know? Apparently, zero tolerance only applies to uh, you know people walking around with a joint of grass in their pocket if if they're individuals. But if it's if it's government operation and it only involves five tons, then suddenly this paper of record does everything possible to minimize uh, the impact of uh, of the five tons. And you know if they want to get into quantities, which I I think is absurd because it doesn't matter how little or how much it was. The question is, did they? Did they allow this to go on? But if they do want to talk quantities, I mean, it, it, we have the sworn testimony of Jorge Morales, for instance, uh, w again, one of the pilots that uh, that he gave about $5 million to the country. Now, that's just one player, one drug smuggler who diverted some $5 million. Uh, and when you look at the overall picture uh, of, uh, you know, the, the drug stuff, it... It's pretty obvious that, that major amounts of cocaine came in around the whole Contra effort and was CIA-related. Uh, some people estimate that more than half of the U.S. coke uh, came in through these channels. People like uh, Ramon Mata Ballesteros, who was a Honduran, brought in two shipments uh, that totaled 7.6 tons. Now that's just you know one Contra supporter with 7.6 tons. Uh, I mentioned Morales uh, giving some five million in drug profits. Uh, you know when you start to add this up, it adds up to a lot of people and a lot of drugs, as has happened with previous covert operations. I mean, if you look, for instance, at the CIA support of uh, the Mujahideen around Afghanistan. Uh, we supported them, and the trucks were going in from Pakistan up to the Khyber Pass, loaded with arms for the rebels that we supported, and the same trucks were bringing back their product, which was the opium heroin, just as in a previous era, Air America had uh, taken arms to uh, the Hmong tribesmen and brought out their product, uh, opium heroin. And, and the fact is that when Brzezinski went to uh, set this up, set up the supply of the Mujahideen in March of 1979, there was almost no traffic in heroin from that part of the world. And yet within two years, heroin, w there was an epidemic of it in the U.S., and 50% of it was coming from that part of the world. So, you know, to say only five tons or only a tiny amount uh, it, it is absurd. Because, because, see, the problem, too, uh, Roy, is that even if it is only a small amount in terms of tonnage, it's corrosive of the whole law enforcement policy. I mean, how can you go after a drug trafficker for trafficking for personal profit if he, if you have already kind of blessed him by allowing him to do some to help the Contras? And, you know, it's like getting your ticket punched. Uh, I've, you know, one DEA man said. You know, when when talking about uh, the, uh, the guy that used to fly into Mena, Arkansas, uh, you know, his name escapes me for a minute, but I'll think of it, uh, Barry Seal. When Barry Seal, uh, this the, the DEA man said, you know, the problem with Barry Seal is he, he does one load for us and ten for himself. You know, so how much of the cocaine is attributable to this corruption of law enforcement and this this looking the other way because these people are doing a favor for the intelligence agency it is very hard to pin down in terms of actual tonnage. But, but I can guarantee you that for a paper like the LA Times to try to minimize the importance of this, uh, I think is a great mistake on their part. It, uh, it, it, it means that they are editorializing and they are basically rebutting the news rather than investigating the news. And when they say, well, there's no evidence that they have found, the question is, how hard have they looked? I mean, the fact is, the, the LA Times 
spent more money investigating the Church of Scientology than it has this whole question of the Contras and drugs. Well, a few tons here, a few tons there, and pretty soon you're <laughs> looking at some uh, real drugs. That's right. Oh, one other incident of, uh, you know, you, you want some hard facts. When, uh, when, uh, the, when Ollie North set up his so-called humanitarian uh, relief thing, they, they did it through four companies whose names were, were uh, proposed by the CIA. All four of those companies, by the way, had already at that point been linked to drug trafficking and and they the US government the taxpayers generously funded these four organizations to carry quote humanitarian aid down to the Contras and when the DEA or others wanted to look at it Ollie North himself discouraged them from looking at it because these were basically protected companies so you know thousands of taxpayers dollars went to subsidize companies that were known by our own officials to be involved in drug trafficking. You know, so, so how can they say now that there's no evidence or that the links haven't been established? Uh, it, it's really quite preposterous. Well, it's a good business. They, the, the government brings in the drugs, and the government distributes the drugs, takes those profits, um, and then um, hires our, our taxpayers' money, lots of police, and builds jails and arrests <laughs> the people who are caught with the drugs, the little people, and puts them in jail and gets the money from the prisons and the forced labor from the prisoners where that exists and, uh, and more money for police, uh, for more drug busts, and plus the fact that they get you know, at least half of the profit from the drugs that they bring in themselves. It's quite a good business. And when officials look into it, as uh, you know, the present drug czar, McCaffrey, said, well, we've looked into this before and we haven't found a thing, you know, how hard do they look? I suggest that they get on the Internet and look up the Kerry Report and read only the first page of the Kerry Report. The, the subcommittee, that report came out, I think, in 89. Um, the very first page of it says that, they, that, that this Senate investigative um, effort found substantial evidence of, of drug trafficking among countries. And it wasn't just... And this is without really looking into that. That's right. Well, well, they didn't look into the connection to the CIA, but they did look at, at the drug trafficking and, and you know, that, that it was being done by Contras. Even that has not really been carried by the uh, L.A. Times and the other papers of record. Uh, but, you know, for, for them or McCaffrey to say, well, you know, we haven't found a thing, take a look at Senator Kerry's report because he found a lot of evidence that the Contras were involved in drug trafficking. Now, that doesn't link it immediately to the CIA, but, I mean, as I say, the, the Contras were, in part, a CIA creation. They certainly were resupplied by the Contras regularly, uh, and, and yes, one of the things that the Christ against... They were resupplied by this. The Contras were resupplied by the CIA. Yeah, and one, of, one the, of the news stories is that the Contras didn't get hardly anything. There was only a couple of dozen guys with no boots and yeah. And uh, just an old gun with two bullets, and they, they didn't get any of this supposedly big money. And one of the things that we found out while we were doing our lawsuit at, at, the, at the Christic Institute, we, we deposed Donald Gregg, a former CIA man, who at that time was the chief of staff for Vice Pre then Vice President uh, George Bush. And that's where the CIA was... I mean, that's where the resupply of the Contras was really being done, was being coordinated out of the vice president's office by Donald Gregg. And we, we surfaced a document where he clearly was speaking uh, to others about, quote, resupply of the Contras. was right there in the document. And, you know, he, he later said, oh, well, that must have been a slip by the secretary to, to write that. <laughs> What was the slip? I forgot what he said the slip was too. It was uh um, Well he, he, he later he, he then first he said it was just some kind of mistake and then later he said, Oh, I, I, I understand now how she must have done it. We were must have been talking about resupply of the copters. That's right, the and, copters. Yeah, and we d we didn't really mean resupply of the contras. So uh anyhow, I mean it, it it's it's really absurd when you think that this stuff was uh was being resupplied right out of the vice president's office who by the way at that time was was the drug czar i mean they didn't call him that but one of his portfolios as vice president was to uh, be in charge of drugs and as a former director of the cia he certainly knew for instance 
uh, because it was documented from 72 on that Noriega was involved in drugs. But uh, Bush and the CIA had no problems with Noriega until he stopped doing our bidding regarding the Contras and started getting a little uppity about what he would and wouldn't do. And it was at that point that they went after him. Eventually, of course, invaded the country, killed all kinds of people, uh, and, uh, you know, supposedly to stop drug dealing, which hasn't stopped a bit uh, going through Panama. In fact, even Time magazine says it's worse now than it was before. The point is that we've, we've known about people like Noriega and his drug dealing as long as it fits in with the CIA's plans and these, quote, national security efforts, you know, like quashing the, the uh, Sandinista government in Nicaragua, then we, we look the other way at their drug dealing. As, as I remember in a talk by Danny Sheehan, um, also Noriega endangered himself by having some Japanese businessmen in, Ca in Panama planning to possibly change their their money uh, standard from dollars to yen. That's right. And which would have eliminated Panama as the, the major money laundering place for us. It was when, when he started getting out of line doing things like that that we started going after him. But it wasn't that you know they suddenly discovered his drug dealing, whereas before they didn't know it. We also have to point out that George Bush in 1988, when he was president, ordered the State Department, the CIA, and the Department of Defense not to cooperate with the drug investigation, which, which the GAO wanted done around Noriega. In, in 1988, Bush ordered them not to cooperate with that effort, uh, you know, because Noriega, of course, was still in favor at that point. It was only later that he fell from favor and uh, got wiped out. When, you know, I can't help thinking, too, I, I know Panama and I, a little bit anyhow, and, and I know that the two areas that were just decimated, just flattened, were two poor barrios. One of them was called El Chorito, and the other one was San Miguelito. And I, I can't help thinking, you know, it's, it's like Compton and uh, South Central. Uh, the fact is, we don't care what happens to poor people, especially people of color, uh, in an area. I mean, a lot of blacks, I know, think that they're being deliberately targeted with some kind of genocide, as far as I can see, that's not going on. But it's worse than it's worse than it's the worst kind of racism. It's it means that their community can be decimated because people don't care. They don't even care whether they're black or Eskimo or what. Um, they're they're poor people. They're people without voice, and they don't fit into our plans. Just like San Miguelito and El Chorito didn't, and and got literally flattened. You know, as South Central has been flattened in another sense by you know by economic factors, but but certainly this this major scourge of of crack, you know, cocaine has clearly been a real problem for the whole country, black, white, and whatever. But while it's been a problem in most neighborhoods, it has been a plague in South Central, and and it seems to me. The blacks are right to be upset about this and to be demanding that we find out whether our government looked the other way, whether officials allowed this to happen, you know, and, and we don't want these kind of minimalizing arguments from the L.A. time that, oh, well, it was only five tons or it was only a few people and there really are no documents and we've looked into this before and, you know, L.A. Times should spend the kind of investigative money that it has on, on other efforts, uh, like I mentioned, you know, the Church of Scientology. Um, if they would spend this kind of money on the drug issue, uh, then they might have something to say about it other than these editorializing rebuttals of the real news that's coming out elsewhere. Uh, are you brave enough to make any predictions as to... Uh how long this story will run, if it will take off, and if the investigations will finally bring out the truth? Well, one or of the things that, that I can predict for sure is that Congress is going to do what it's always done. It will hem and haw and huff and puff and, you know, maybe even hold hearings, but they will, uh, you know, confuse uh, voluminous with comprehensive. In other words, they'll, they'll have very long, long uh, hearings that produce tons of paper, uh, but they will assiduously avoid the crucial questions. 
because there's no institutional will to go after it. Certainly, you know, since this was largely done during a Republican administration, Republicans don't want to hear about it. And certainly, a lot of Democrats were compromised by it too. Certainly, the present president, who was governor of Arkansas when MENA Arkansas base was used for taking arms to the Contras and bringing drugs back in uh, while he was governor there, uh, he's not going to want to hear about it because it doesn't, uh, you know, make him look too good. So I, I can predict that the powers that be are going to do just what the L.A. Times has already done, and that is give us all kinds of rebuttal and minimalizing arguments. Now, when you ask, is the story going to continue, I think largely because of the Internet and because of the outrage in the black community, there's some real hope here for something substantial happening. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen automatically because they're, you know, the, the damage control people are out in force. Uh, but you know, if enough citizens want to know what their government really is doing, what their tax dollars are being used for, and, and demand that we appropriate our own history, then something will happen. Okay, well, thanks, Bill Davis, and uh, as usual, as w we had with the Acoustic Institute update, um, we have an empty chair for you or Danny or anybody else from uh, Acoustic, uh, Acoustic Romero Institute uh, to keep help keep this story alive as well as we can from uh, KPFK. Thank you, and congratulations to you again, because you're one of the few, you know, not only the Internet now, but talk radio, of course, is, is keeping this alive and and i know you've been on it for 10 years you've been way ahead of the story so congratulations oh thanks that's our job here okay kpfk los angeles